This video is brought to you by a huge mountain of drugs. Tecuthal versus Solfim. With a decent opening hand, we can get down Sol Ring on turn two and crack the myriad landscape, so we'll keep it. Our opponent just drops a land, we draw into a rock this turn, so we're sticking with the plan of Sol Ring. Our myriad landscape is untapped now, so we can obviously sacrifice that to make a couple of islands ramping nicely this turn. Unfortunately, our opponent managing to blow up our Sol Ring there, but we're drawing to Nykthos anyway, so we've still got a 4 drop. Not much point in playing out our commander when we don't have a means of proliferating. So I'll get down the Thought Vessel, we'll have 5 mana next turn hopefully, so we can start ticking up Tezzeret maybe. Throw out the Chasm Skulker with our 3 mana, start putting plus counters on that. It's one of our most consistent ways of having counters on a permanent. <laughs> but our opponent's got answers to everything, there's a Goblin Chain Whirler, 1 damage to all our creatures and to us. So down goes Chasm Skulker, it does trigger when it dies, but no plus counters on it for any squid. Okay, and there is a Baby Jace. So I think the aim here should be another land drop in the Solemn Simulacrum. Uh, the more islands we have in play, the more chances we have of going for the extra planar lens with Tezzeret, that will double up our islands. Slightly risky against a red player, but we'll challenge them to have even more artifact removal. And then the Chain Whirler swings in towards us for 3 damage, we'll just take it here. And then casting a Vindictive Flame Stoker. So that's a means of card draw for them eventually. And triggering it immediately is an Urabrask's Forge. We draw another 3 drop Planeswalker, Mu Yanling. That can debuff creatures and eventually make a 4-4 flying elemental token. So I think we're just best getting this Tezzeret on the way here. And we will tick down for 3 so that we can search up an artifact and it is going to be the extra planar lens. So it comes into play, exiles a land, and the imprinted lands on the entire battlefield will tap for 2 mana here so we can drop down the ledger shredder. And we should be able to protect our planeswalker quite nicely here. <laughs> or not, they get down a Hasty Phoenix in Skyfire Phoenix. Oh, and I forgot about the Forge as well, so... Yeah, they were going wide on us either way. So, all this damage swinging in at the Tezzeret, we might as well leave bodies in play. Because obviously we've got more Planeswalkers that we can protect here with those. Alright, another land is two extra mana this turn. So, let's drop our Commander. Get as many blue pips into play as possible for the Nykthos. And then we have a mana floating, so we'll go for Mu Yanling. That triggers the Ledger Shredder, so let's see if we get a better spell. Huh. Choosing between Baby Jace and Flux Channel is pretty rough, but... It has to be Baby Jace there, I think, because it is a means of card draw. Cycle some mana through the Nykthos. And that makes us five blue mana. And we'll see what we draw into here, going to uh, minus one, so that we are the only one who draws a card. <laughs> Alright, speaking of card draw, that is Myogen of Seeing Winds. So we'll draw a hell of a lot of cards with that. Plus Moo onto the Phoenix, that will be minus two to power. And also loses flying conveniently. And then we're just holding back through combat to protect our walkers. Self him into play, so we'll have to be wary of double damage now. And then a 2-1 haste trampler from the forge. Surprisingly, not swinging in with anything though. Don't know if we've got any particularly good blocks here. Alright, and another really good draw straight off the top in Contagion Engine, so... Let's go for ticking down the Moo, and we'll make a 4-4 flyer. Then Jace can tick down and draw us a card again, and Cloudfin Raptor's nice. Once we can get into another creature to start putting plus counters on it with Evolve. So I'll throw that down now. And go for the Nykthos here. That makes us 8 blue mana, which isn't quite enough for Myojin and the Contagion Engine. So we're best just dealing with our opponent's board now. Let's throw out the Contagion Engine. That's going to be our only means of proliferate at the moment. Does trigger the Ledger Shredder. 
Uh, there's a land, so we just discard the land. We've got plenty of mana, thankfully. Contagion Engine pointed at our opponent a minus counter on all of their creatures. And then we'll go for Proliferate twice now from the Contagion Engine, which will mean that we proliferate four times, thanks to our commander being in play. So it's an extra minus counter on all of our opponent's creatures. Extra plus counter on Ledger Shredder and extra loyalty on our walkers. And like I said, we do this four times. Noteworthy that on the red creature over there, it's not allowing us to choose between minus counters and oil counters. So it is just adding oil counters for us. Which would be relevant if that thing was going to survive here. Anyway, we get a one-sided board wipe on our opponent thanks to the Contagion Engine. And I think it's safe to start dealing the first bits of damage to my opponent. I'll hold back the Solemn Simulacrum because that will be a decent blocker for us potentially. Alright, and that's enough to end our opponent. Went through his draw step to his second card in hand but didn't like it. So doesn't fancy his odds from here, which is fair enough. We'll play another one. Up against Mummy Elish Norn this time with a two lander. Uh, yeah, no ramp, but I know better than to mulligan sometimes on Magic Online, so we'll try that. Had a good game previously, so if we get stomped by Elish Norn, then it'll still be a fun game at least. Going to get the bolt land down here, take our first three points of damage, and then we can go for the Kosi's Trickster. That will start getting plus counters on it whenever our opponent shuffles, which... Hopefully he's running fetches in the deck. I've seen a lot more monocolor players doing that nowadays. That's turn one mana crypt from our opponent, so ramping way ahead of us by at least two turns. I make that three turns, that is a commander's sphere. But we get into some ramp for turn two ourselves, so throw down the arcane signet after the nesting grounds. Might as well swing in and peck our opponent as well. Okay, so thanks to the fast mana, there is a turn two LS Norn. Alright, and we get a land off the top as well, that's really good. So I think we're best holding up removal for the reality shift. And that can go on Elish Norn in response to a creature being cast, which means we've got two mana free. And we'll go for the Lighthouse Chronologist. Should have tapped down my Arcane Signet really, just in case they've got removal. Okay, a Loyal Warhound. Uh, in response to that, actually... They're going to get two triggers here, but only one land, because they're going to have the same number of lands as us by the time it resolves for a second time, so we'll hold up the reality shift still. Doesn't matter if they get two triggers here. So searching for the first time, that is Kosi's Trickster with a plus counter on it. Only really needs the one on there if we're going to be proliferating. Okay, they did have removal for the Arcane Signet, unfortunately, so down to three mana we go. A Revoke Existence will exile it. And we'll just float the mana in response. Alright, our opponent cracks the Commander Sphere, which they might not have done had we have gone for removing the Commander. So it's Reality Shift before combat onto the Elish Norn. And we draw into Jace the Mind Sculptor, which isn't all that useful, so might as well start ticking up this Lighthouse Chronologist. Just take it up to level 1 so that we can hold up the Bounce spell in hand. Okay, and our opponent goes for the scary new Phyrexian Vindicator. So we're not going to be able to swing in or block with that thing in play. So we can just block the manifested permanent there and take three from the dog. And then at the end of the turn we'll make use of the Serum Snare. And that can bounce the big white creature to buy us a turn here. No proliferate from that because it is a four drop. Okay, and a time spiral, pretty useless to us, so... We will go for leveling up on the Lighthouse Chronologist again, take it up to level 3 here, which doesn't do anything at the moment, but apparently we're playing the long game. This isn't really meant as a 1v1 deck, it was built if it was built with multiplayer in mind, but haven't had a chance to play it in multiplayer yet, and or the games haven't turned out all that well, so just trying it in 1v1 here, but we are at a disadvantage against 1v1 built decks. Down comes Elish Norn again this turn. And then going through to combat, just swinging in with the Warhound. We'll be able to start blocking that next turn because we level up the power and toughness of our Chronologist. Drawing and casting a Wizard class. 
And then the Lighthouse Chronologist getting bumped up to level 4, making it a 2-4. Oh, Alright, excellent. And that is a Kicked Skyclave Relic, which I actually forgot to add in my initial build of a Traxa, or um, Elish Norn even. So 6 mana for 5 indestructible mana is pretty damn good in Elish Norn. And they're not done there, they've got the Sanctum Prelate as well. And they name 2 with that, so non-creature spells with mana value of 2 can't be cast. Well, slightly worried about mana drain and counter spell and all that type of stuff. Our opponent's swinging in with Norn and the dog again, so they haven't realised that we've levelled up the power and toughness of our chronologist. That is a 2-4 now, so goes up against the 3-1 quite nicely. Alright, and there's the land that we've desperately needed, so... I think it might be just Jace and Bounce continue to buy ourselves some more time. Because we're still not into a proliferate effect here. So play the Jace, tick down minus one, and unsummon the Elesh Norn. So our opponent just recasting the Norn with two cards in hand, putting Summoning Sickness back on that thing. And the Phyrexian Vindicator back into play with Summoning Sickness again. And looks like we're going to see the last card in hand as well. Alright, that's Teleportation Circle, so... Able to start flickering things, which isn't all that relevant unless that manifest creature is something good. As long as it's a permanent, they can flicker it and have it come back in as said permanent. Okay, not swinging in, so just going straight through to the end step, Teleportation Circle does flicker that. <laughs> Alright, and it is an enchantment that's Wrath Protection, so... Promise of Tomorrow, not something that you see all that often, that's... Yeah, that might be a good one for Elish Norn, actually, because it does... Exile all your stuff and then bring it back into play on the back of a board wipe. Yeah, I might consider running that myself, actually. Contentious plan we draw into. Just go into go for the Brainstorm on Jace, because we likely lose it next turn anyway. Alright, and they're actually really decent cards on top of our library, so... Get rid of the Contentious plan and the Time Spiral. And now the question is, do we drop the Mana Crypt without the Flux Channeler in play? Because, obviously, playing Mana Crypt will trigger the Flux Channeler for Proliferate. Yeah, our opponent's in top deck mode, and we're pretty safe against his board through the next turn, at least, because Jace is going to be what they focus on, I imagine. So we'll get down the Teku Thal here. Set ourselves up nicely with that Flux Channeler. Also puts a decent Flying Blocker in the way as well, which might be relevant. Our opponent's showing us through the first main phase what he drew into, a Mox Opal, so no need to play around anything here. Should have held on to that through combat, really. But I doubt we were going to block regardless, so... Elish Norn going in towards us, the big flyer going to take out Jace. We will block Elish Norn with our commander. And neither creatures go down there. And then the teleportation circle, luckily no ETB effects in play still. So just flickering the Phyrexian and putting it in the way as a blocker. Which is actually good enough, I think. So we know what we're drawing into in Time Spiral. Let's go for the Flux Channeler. Don't mind drawing into the other Proliferate effect next turn. Play ourselves a Mana Crypt into the Flux Channeler. So that will proliferate, putting another couple of plus counters on the Trickster and a couple of level counters on the Chronologist. And that means that we're only one level away from leveling that up to extra turns. So we'll certainly do that. And it is now at its maximum level of 7. And we can start taking extra turns after our opponent's turn. Also being bumped up to a 3-5, so we can block the commander with it as well. Still swinging in regardless, so I'd rather risk... Our opponent's got a card in hand, I'd rather risk losing the commander than the chronologist at this point. So we'll block there and take the 5. And the circle goes on the stack, as does the chronologist. So we're going to take an extra turn after this one. Only problem is that the Mana Crypts are going to double up now. And we do lose the flip there. So I'll draw into the Contentious Plan. And yeah, we're not going to ramp with the Solemn Simulacrum, but I wouldn't mind drawing an extra card by throwing it in the way, potentially. So I think this is an alright use of our extra turn. Otherwise we wouldn't have a chance to get that into play, really. Argument to be made for just throwing down Toothy. Maybe Toothy before the Solemn, actually. So that we can put plus counters on it sooner, that probably would have been a better idea. And then we can finally start making use of this nesting grounds. The plus counter that is on the trickster can be moved on to another creature here, probably our commander. So we'll remove one from the trickster, put it on our commander, and then when we start proliferating soon, we'll be able to really make use of that. 
nesting grounds in here mainly for the indestructible counter that we can put on our commander. We can start moving it around to other permanents, but pretty niche and it's not often going to come up, I don't think, unless we get some long multiplayer games. Alright, and then we begin our actual turn and we dodge the bolt this time, thankfully. And there's a land for us, which I don't mind at all. So now we get down the Toothy, like I said, probably should have done that last turn. Did Solomon Toothy in the wrong order. And then we can activate the Wizard class, put it up to level 2. No counters on these sagas, unfortunately. But this will draw us a couple of cards. And we can start throwing plus counters around when we level that up to level 3. Draws us into a Ponga fight and a land, and there is the Toothy couple of plus counters, thanks to the draw. And we're just holding back here, I think. Slowly, slowly setting up, but luckily we're against a mono white player who's struggling on card draw. Our opponent just passing straight through his turn with one card in hand. So once again we're going to get an extra turn thanks to the Chronologist. Okay, and this time drawing into that Contagion engine again and we saw how much work that can do. So we drop a land. Throwing Contagion engine into play is a decent use of our mana during this extra turn. That will proliferate with the Channeler, so proliferate twice, put additional counters on all of our stuff. We'll do it with the level counters as well, just in case that's of any relevance. Because we might be able to move those around with nesting grounds at some point. And speaking of the nesting grounds, we'll put a plus counter on another creature now. It can go on to the Flux Channeler, ready for potentially proliferating next turn. Argument to be made for the Pongify onto the Flyer over there, but... Like I said, I think we're still very slowly setting up here. Getting bolted by the Crypt, going down to 16. That is going to be relevant during these extra turns, like I said before. Alright, and there's another means to proliferate. And it just so happens to be pro-white as well. Sword of Truth and Justice. So, Pongify straight away onto the Flyer. We'll proliferate with the uh, Flux Channeler. So, yeah, probably should have used the Nesting Grounds first if we were going to do this. Toothy ending up at 8 plus counters on it now though, so that's a nice means of card draw for us potentially. And the Promise of Tomorrow exiles the Phyrexian Vindicator when it's destroyed. So let's drop ourselves a Sword of Truth and Justice. And that will proliferate everything again thanks to it being a non-creature spell, so you can see why I wanted the Flux Channeler so much. Yeah, so I didn't fully plan out the turn as much as I maybe should have done. We'll use the Nesting Grounds now. We've missed out on proliferating plus counters on the Solemn, but we'll move on from the Trickster onto the Solemn now, and we'll still have enough mana to equip the sword. Okay, so argument to be made for putting the sword onto our commander because it has flying and it'll be able to go straight over our opponent's stuff, but I want to encourage them to block, really, because I'm hoping it'll really slow them down, so we'll put it on the Flux Channeler, and we're just turning pretty much everything in sideways here. Don't want to lose the Chronologist. We'll hold back the Solemn as a blocker as well, because we do have to consider our life total here. Alright, and we are encouraging blocks here, that's good. So, obviously the Sword doesn't give protection from green, so they can block with the Ape, which is what we planned for. And yeah, they are blocking with everything, so we are wiping their board and getting rid of that Promise for Tomorrow before they start getting ETBs. So, Promise for Tomorrow continues to trigger. The destroyed cards go underneath that, and then they go through to our end step. And it will trigger and they have no creatures in place, so sacrificing that and returning all the creatures that they chose to exile previously. Can imagine how good that would be if they had a bunch of double ETBs. Fortunately, our opponent hasn't really managed on that front this game. Not worthy that they chose three for their three drop now, so we can cast the contentious plan now, which we couldn't previously. And they've got one card in hand, they just dropped a land. Continuing to swing in with the Phyrexian Vindicator, which they didn't previously, so they could have an extra 5 points of damage on us here, and that could have made all the difference. Anyway, Elish Norn can be blocked by the Chronologist, which we said would be relevant previously. And then it's through to our turn, and we do not take the Bolt. This is our extra turn, of course, don't forget. And that is a Tezzeret's Gambit for plenty of Proliferate. So we'll put some mana into the nesting grounds again. We don't have any plus counters on the uh, Lighthouse Chronologist yet. That's our last creature to put plus counters on, so we'll do it now. Especially if it's going to be blocking. And then we'll move the sword over to our commander and actually start dealing some damage to our opponent now that he's down to 11. 
I think our opponent got bolted last turn as well by his own crypt. And then we'll go for four mana into the Tezzeret's Gambit. So that is going to be draw two and proliferate two with the board as it stands now. And we proliferate twice from the Channeler as well, thanks to casting that. So we're going to have some massive creatures here. And we draw into a land and baby Jace again. The Toothy going to get two more plus counters of its own accord, thanks to us drawing the cards. Haven't made a land yet, so we can drop the island. Yeah, and I think we just go wide on our opponent here, even with that Maze of Ith in play. And the Vindicator in the way. Our creatures are big enough thanks to the Proliferate and the Nesting Grounds. So we can just smash through here, and even if our opponent blocks with the Vindicator, that trigger will be on the stack and they'll have lost the game already, so it doesn't matter. This all relies on the fact that there's no Settle the Wreckage or anything like that, though. So they block the Massive Toothy, which means that we'd have to sacrifice pretty much all of our permanents, I think. But we managed to knock our opponent down to minus four, so like I said, you can see the Vindicator on the stack there, and that would have had us sacrifice a hell of a lot of permanents, but we managed to drag the game out long enough, turn 14, wow, uh, managed to drag the game out long enough to beat the mono white player who was struggling in top deck mode, unfortunately. But you get the gist, this is exactly what we want to do with Tekuthal, so if you enjoyed it, be sure to have a look at the deck list if you're interested, and leave the video a thumbs up to help with YouTube's algorithms. I'm Tribal Kai, thank you for watching.